Hello guys, Moritz here. And today I am going to show you how you can put your root file system, which is normally located on your micro SD card, on either your Raspberry Pi or Odroid computer, onto an external hard drive, which is in this package right here, in order to preserve your micro SD card because it will degrade with excessive writing onto it, which is the case when the root file system is located on your micro SD card. And that's why I'm going to show you how you can move it from your micro SD card to an external hard drive. And that way you also have more storage capacity. And also the only thing that is left on here is something like a bootloader, but we will not get into that right here. This video has been brought to you by JLC PCB, the largest PCB prototype enterprise in China and high quality manufacturer specialized on PCB prototypes. Upload your Gerber files for quality review and order high quality PCBs for affordable prices to turn your project into a real product. Order now and get free shipping on your first order. So before we can get started, I will put this thing together and then we will set up the micro SD card. After that we will boot into the operating system and then I'm going to show you how you can move it from the micro SD card to the external hard drive. So first I will set this up and here we've got the hard drive. One terabyte, which we will slide in here, just like that. And then we got these two screws here, which we will use to screw down. We we'll only need one. So down here in the upper right corner, we can see there's a hole and we can use the screw to screw down our hard drive. Just like that. Since the Odroid gets very hot when you use all of its cores for some compiling or whatever, it gets to around something like 90 degrees and I don't think that CPUs are very happy about that. I mean, Apple is doing it, but we will use this little fan, which has a USB port on the other side, which you can plug in into the USB 2.0 port of the Odroid because it doesn't have any other peripherals where we can do that. Also, it is run on five volts, so we don't have 12 volts available. That's why I'm going to use this 5 volt fan. But before we can put it on there, I will have to check and see in which direction it is blowing. Blowing in that direction. Because there are no markings on the side. Normally you will have some kind of arrows on the side imprinted in here, which will tell you in which direction the motor is spinning and in which direction the air is blowing. So also normally the air is blown in that direction where this grill is, this plastic grill, not the metal one. We will get rid of the metal ones because we want to attach it right here and these are in the way. Here I've got some M4 screws with a length of 4 centimeters, so M4 40s. And we will use two of these to screw it into the Odroid case. And you can see down the end here that there are these slots on the inside, here and here. And that's where we are going to screw in these screws because they fit in there pretty nice. With the fan I also got these three filters. So dust filters, which are washable. So I think I will go ahead and put one on here and just get rid of these grills. Also, we have to make sure that the cable obviously is not on the bottom. So let's put it on the side like so. And that's it. Now we'll just have to plug in the USB cable over here and we are pretty much done. So here I'm on my PC and the first thing you want to do is download your operating system of choice. So head on onto Google. In my case I will use DietPy, which is a lightweight operating system optimized for file storage and cloud things. And head on over to download. Then select in my case Odroid HC1 which is right here but you can see there are also files for various other boards and even VMware and VirtualBox or native PC but we are only interested in the Odroid HC1 and you can see some specs of the board pros and cons and we will just download the image save it and this will take some time depending on your internet connection so we've downloaded the file 
since I already downloaded it, I've got it down here in my download folder. So it is right here. So the next thing you want to do is unzip it. And that's what I've already done as well. So here you've got your image and a hash if you want to check whether the file is legit. And that's all we need for now. So open up a terminal, or there are now two ways how you can write the operating system onto your microSD card. One thing would be to use Etcher, which is available for various platforms, where you can just select your image, in this case DietPy, select your drive, and then hit flash, which is a nice way of doing it, but I will now show you another way how you can do it. And for that we will need to type in sudo disk util list and then you will need to type in your password and this will now show us all drives that are connected to this computer and next you want to do is plug in your micro sd card and then hit sudo disk util list again so we can now see the difference between these two things printed to the console and see that our micro sd card is the one down here under slash dev slash disk 2 with a size of 15.6 gigabytes and what we need to do now is keep in mind this name right here dev disk 2 and use disk util again to unmount it and for that we will use unmount disk and then slash dev disk 2 not 3 so we unmounted it and then we will use dd to copy the image onto the micro sd card so for that we will use sudo dd if for input file stream equals and now we will need to tell it where our file lives which is under downloads uh, dietpy and then DietPy version 6, Odroid XU4, ARM v7, jesse.image, and now we will tell it with OF output file stream where to write all of it. And now we will need this path right here, slash dev slash this 2 and we will make one little modification to it. We will type rdisk2 which will speed up the process because we are directly writing to the block device instead of the device in there, but don't worry about it. We'll just make this part faster. We also type in bs equals 1m for 1 megabyte. Then hit enter. And don't worry if there are no prints to the console because the program doesn't output any information. And then just wait until it copied all of the operating system to your micro SD card and we successfully transferred all of it now if we close the terminal we will see this sd card appear here with the name of boot which is fine so since the odroid hc1 doesn't have any peripherals like hdmi and stuff like that we will need to do a headless installation and for that on dietpy we will have this little configuration file right here dietpy txt where we can set some stuff for it to headlessly install on other systems like raspbian or something like that you can i think just create a file in here and set it right there that it will install headlessly but we will just do it like this so open up the dietpy.txt with your preferred text editor in my case i will use adam for that and in here we can change some settings and let's see first of all we will change the networking options this is optional for you but in my case i will change some things so auto setup ethernet enabled yes we will want to use a static ip address so let me type that in right here and the router is that too uh, the static dns is also fine i will also change the host name to hc1 we don't want to force the ethernet speed so you can also set your password i guess i will just leave it like dietpy yeah we will use uh, drop bear 
It's SSA server. We can also optionally install a Samba share, but you can do that also later on. That looks all fine to me so far. So hit save and then close your editor. And now we are good to go. So close it and eject your micro SD card. And now we can plug it into the Odroid and start it up. So I've plugged in the Odroid and it started up. So now we can open up our terminal again and let me clear that type in ssh dietpy at 192.168.2.2 so this ip address may vary it depends on your router configurations but now we should be able to sign in and yeah the host key identification changed in my case because i already had dietpy running on this Android before just to test some things so now i will need to edit my .ssh known hosts file and get rid of the entry in line 86 and for that we can just use nano so we'll type in nano.ssh slash known host and we will just go to the line where it said it was it was line 86 and we got 87 lines so if you press ctrl v you can skip the pages i'll press ctrl k to remove the line ctrl c to get out of it yes save and now we can try that again and now we have to accept the fingerprint type in the password which is diet pi or oh, i mistyped that diet pi and now we have to initialize our installation okay it will get some updates for us and install the operating system. So this will take some time and I will just speed that up in the post edit. So Dietpy has been updated to the latest version. Your system will now reboot. Once completed, simply log in to resume Dietpy setup. So hit enter and we got kicked out of the session. So we will wait a few seconds and then try to log back in. Really? Oh, come on. So we have to edit the file again, it seems. SSH again. Yes, type in dietpy as the password. Yes, accept the license. And we got the dietpy software right here. Install. Hit yes, because we can also install other programs later on. And it will now go through the installation process. So the system will reboot again. And we will wait a few seconds before we try to lock back in again. Hopefully this time we don't have to remove the host's fingerprint. And now we are all set up and running. And now we can get to the process where we will put our root file system onto the external hard drive. First of all, use lsusb to check what is connected. And we can see that we've got our Linux Foundation 3.0 root hub, where probably our hard drive is connected to. So this will be the ID 1D6B. But this doesn't tell us which device it is. So slash dev slash SDA, SDB, whatever. So we can know that right now. So let's also check the boot log. And for that we will cut slash var slash log and then see diet pie boot log okay there's not much information in there let's check the dpk log no there's nothing in there so we can't check the log because diet pie doesn't have the boot log but we can also type in d message and there we can check if our drive was somehow found by our operating system so let's do it something different. Let's type in D message, pipe grab slash dev. And let's see, there's nothing interesting for us. 
But what we can do is see what devices are under slash dev. And down here we have SDA. So this is probably our hard drive because our micro SD card should be something like this MMC BLK0. And we can check that by typing in DF minus H. And sure enough, MMC BLK0 P1 and 2 is our micro SD card right here. So the only thing that SDA can be is our hard drive. But the better way is to check it by using LS USB, which in this case didn't work. Or check the log message under slash var slash log slash messages and try grab grabbing SDA. And they should see some clues like what type of device it is and what size it has. And if it would be the hard drive there would be something like 900 gigabytes or one terabyte or something like that so now we know that our hard drive is sda but before we can go any further we will need to install some applications so type in sudo apt get install rsync and gdisk So we will use gdisk for creating our partitions on the hard drive and the advantage of using gdisk is that you can add drives in the future because gdisk adds unique partition identifiers which fdisk or gpart doesn't work because you could also use those programs for the creation. So now we will type in sudo gdisk slash dev for devices and SDA, which is our hard drive. We will be creating two partitions, one for the root file system and another one for our data storage because we got one terabyte of hard drive and we don't want to use everything of it for our root file system. But we could do that and just create one partition, but it's a much nicer and cleaner way to just do two partitions and have those two things separated from each other. So the first partition we will We'll create will be the root partition for that we will type in n for new partition and just hit enter because we want to use one or just type in one and then we will tell it to use the first sector just hit enter and now we can tell it how big the root fs partition should be you could go with eight gigabytes so type in ag i will just give it some four gigabytes more space so i will just use 12 gigabytes so we will type in plus 12 g and current type is linux file system which is fine because we are on a Linux. Also, we can hit enter right here for the GUID. And now we can create the second partition. You could also create more than two partitions like I'm doing. So you could do several partitions for different things that you want to keep separate. I will just have one data partition and one root file system partition. So I will hit again N for new partition number two. And first sector is the one after the first partition. And the last sector will be the last one. So I will just hit enter again to use the whole space of the hard drive. We can hit enter here right again. And we are pretty much done for our two partitions. Uh, we can use V to verify if everything worked. We have no problems. So now we can hit W to make our changes permanent. If you did something wrong or something, you can still hit no and get out of it and change stuff as you prefer. I will just hit yes and it will write our partition table. So the operation completed successfully, so everything worked out fine. Now we need to format our partitions uh, because there, there's just empty space on the hard drive. In order to put a file system on it, we will need to format it. So for that we will use make file system, which is mk e2fs minus t ext4 minus l. Here you can specify a label for your partition. In this case for the first one I will call it root fs and use def sda1 because since we created two partitions we now have sda1 and sda2 under devices so i will hit enter and it will create our file system for us we will do the same thing for sda2 but we will name it differently we will not name it root fs but 
data, hit enter again. This might take a little bit longer. You can also see the super blocks right here. In file systems, you have uh, everything stored in blocks and the super blocks store some additional information about the hard drive and those get copied or backupped in different spaces amongst the whole hard drive. So in case the first super block on the hard drive gets corrupted, the file system can use any of the other ones to recreate it or use that instead. Now we will need to mount our root partition and for that we will use sudo mount slash dev sda1 which was our root fs partition and mount it to slash mount. So now if we type in df minus h we can see down here that our newly created partition with the size of 12 gigabytes was mounted to slash mount. And now we will copy the file system of dietpy or in your case Debian or whatever uh, operating system you are using or mirror it to our newly created partition and for that we will use rsync in instead of dd before because dd will also copy empty space and rsync doesn't so it should be a little bit faster. We will also use the flags a, x and v to copy slash which is the current root file system to slash mount and because of the minus v or the, the v flag we can later see all the files as they get copied so we will hit enter it can take up to five minutes but on the odroid i think it is a little bit faster Also make sure that this process doesn't get interrupted or else you will get into trouble later on. And you can see this didn't take very long. Everything copied successfully. So now we will need to set up the new boot procedure and that way we are telling the operating system where to find the new root file system and from where to start. There are two differences between DietPy and for example Raspbian or something like that. Because here on DietPy we will need to modify the boot.ini file and on other systems like Raspbian you will need to modify the cmd line.txt. So first of all I will go ahead and show you how you can do it here on DietPy and if you are not using DietPy you can skip this part and go directly to the part for other operating systems but here on the DietPy side we will need to modify the file slash DietPy slash boot.ini and before we will modify the file, we will just make a quick backup of that. So sudo cp slash dietpy slash boot.ini and we will copy that to slash dietpy boot.ini dot backup. Then before we can modify the file, or I will just show you the file real quick, boot.ini. And here you can see this line right here, set env for set environment variable, um, boot rootfs and console divider, that is not of our interest. But here you can see the part where it says root equals uuid equals some numbers and letters. And this is the u unique uh, identifier of the microSD cards partition for the root file system. And now we need to get the UUID of our newly created root file system on our external hard drive. And for that we can use the program blkid, which will need to run as root and then type in sudo blkid slash dev slash sda1 which is our root fs our newly created one and here you can see slash dev slash sda1 and here we have a uuid copy that and then we will open up this file once again and we are going to remove this line or rather this id and paste our new id so if you are planning on using a USB drive and not a hard drive or something like that. Um, it is also a good idea to put in a little command right behind root weight, which is root delay equals 10, which will delay it for 10 seconds. So uh, this will wait 10 seconds until using the root FS so the drive can mount correctly. And we will just exit and save. Then we will once again copy the file slash dietpy boot.ini to slash dietpy boot.ini.hd for hard drive. 
so we can always switch between the backup file and the one to use for our external hard drive. Now I will tell you how you can do it on other operating systems and there you will find the file under slash boot. Uh, I don't have it but you will find the file slash boot slash cmd line dot txt and that will have something very similar to the line we had before in the boot.ini and in the boot slash cmd line what you want to do is do a copy of that so cp sudo cp slash boot slash c cmd line dot txt and copy it to slash boot slash cmd line dot txt dot backup to make a backup of the current file so you can always switch if something bad happens and then do that obviously i don't have this file and in there you will find something like dwc underscore otg dot something uh, console equals console equals and then root equals slash dev slash mmc blk 0 p2 or you will have root equals uuid equals and then some numbers and letters and and in the case where you have uh, root equals slash dev slash something, you will want to remove the slash dev slash something and exchange it for the partition we created. If you remember, we created the partition slash dev slash sda1 and you want to remove slash dev slash mmc blk 0p or whatever there is and exchange that for slash dev slash sda. In the other case where you have the uuid, you will want to run sudo blk id slash dev slash sda1 which will tell you the uuid of our rootfs partition and then you will copy this uuid and put it where it says root equals uuid equals something and remove that and put this in instead and that should be everything then you will also want to make a copy of your command line and do something like hd for hard drive so you can switch between the hard drive version and the backup version so you don't lose that next we want to modify the fs tab on our newly created root fs first of all make a backup copy of that which will be found under slash mount slash etc slash fs tab and we will make a copy of that to slash mount slash etc slash fs tab dot backup and then we will edit the file slash mount slash etc slash fs tab and here there's already a difference between dietpy and other operating systems here you can see this line the last one down here which says uh, uuid something and slash which is the root fs uh, auto for the file system type and some other stuff and here we want to remove this uuid and paste in the one we copied from the sudo blkid command on other operating systems you might find something like uh, up here something like slash dev slash mmc blk 0p1 and slash boot and in the next line slash dev slash mmc blk 0p2 and slash and there you want to remove the slash dev slash mmc blk 0p2 and put in slash dev slash sda1 which is our root file system so save that then and now we should be able to reboot and boot into the new root file system so hit reboot and this might take a little bit longer since we added the 10 seconds delay so the boot process could take something like 20 seconds now instead of 10 so we'll just wait a little bit longer before we try to ssh back in again if we can't ssh back in we probably did something wrong and then we can just get the micro sd card plug it into our pc and then copy the file that we just edited either the slash dietpy slash boot.ini remove that one and copy the file slash dietpy slash boot.ini dot backup and rename it to boot.ini and on other systems you can copy the file slash boot slash cmd line dot txt dot backup and rename that to cmdline.txt so let's try logging back in again 
with dietpy and to check if everything worked we can type in df minus h and now we should see that our file system or root file system is right here under slash dev slash sda and mounted on slash everything worked so now we will have to add our data partition so we will create a new directory under slash mount or slash mt slash data then we will have to change the owner of this directory and the current owner or the current user here is dietpy so we will change it to dietpy dietpy which is the owner and the group and then tell it the directory we want to change on your raspberry pi you probably want to use pi pi right here and then hit enter oops i've misspelled the commands which is c h o w n for change owner just like that and now we will need to modify the fs tab again so hit sudo nano slash etc fs tab because we also want to make this partition available on every boot so we will automate it with the fs tab forgot one thing uh, we will also need to get the uuid of the other drive so once again hit sudo blk id slash dev sda2 which will give it the uuid on other systems you will not need the uuid but the path like this one here like uh, slash dev slash sda2 so we will edit this and do something like uh, uuid equals that and we hit tab and tell it the mounting point slash mnt slash data uh, we will also tell it to recognize the file system by itself, but we could also put an ext4, but order is a little bit better. We'll put defaults here and then 0, 1. So exit out of here. Yes, on other operating systems, you will need to put in, instead of the UID stuff here, you will put in slash dev slash sda2, but the rest will be the same as here. So write that. And now we can either re boot or use sudo u mount minus a so we will see this here because all the other hard drives or partitions are already mounted but if we now type in df minus h we should see we didn't see so we will just reboot because that obviously didn't work so well and if you created more than one partition you will need to do the same procedure for every other partition so add an entry in the fs tab and add a directory under slash mount to keep it clean and then change the owner of that so let's see if it worked and yep, down here you can see slash dev slash sda2, 905 gigabytes, 72 megabytes used, available 859 gigabytes, and it is mounted to slash mount slash data. So mount slash data, and you will have this lost and found file, and then you're all set up. So we have successfully moved the root file system from our micro SD card to an external hard drive, and we made two separate partitions for that because we want to keep it clean and have the file system on one partition and our data store on another partition so the micro sd card will now only be something like a bootloader and there will be no writes onto the micro sd card and yeah so if you like this video give it a thumbs up share and subscribe to my channel and i will see you next time bye